Hey everybody, welcome. This is Brian Samuel, the national champ, and he's gonna display his top 32 um, deck from PPG Dallas this yes, past sir. weekend. Yes, sir. How do you feel, Brian? It's uh, good, man. This, uh, this deck actually was uh, surprisingly, surprisingly good. Um, I wanted to take something a little unconventional. Didn't want to take, you know, Broly or you know, Baby, Hacky Sack, whatever maybe. So um, it worked out very good for me. So. Um, the leader that I chose to play was the Sun Goku uh, Turning the Tide. This card was beautiful. Um, and I'll go ahead and go over the deck profile with you guys now, okay? So I could just, you know, I'll go into a more in-depth analysis in, the, in a video we're actually gonna be putting out pretty soon. But right now I'm just gonna show you the deck profile, make it nice and sweet. So here's the leader right here. If you don't know what the leader does, uh, whenever on his base side, it's whenever he attacks a leader card, you draw a card. Um, once per turn when you activate revive, you draw a card as well. Pretty basic. Um, when it awakens, you untap one, draw one. It's awakened side, it's pretty beast. Um, whenever you attack anything, you draw a card. When you do a revive, instead of drawing one, you draw two now. And its other effect is to be able to choose one of your multicolored battle cards and make it pretty much deadly defender to where you have to attack that and cannot attack the leader, which is the whole bread and butter of the deck. So. I'll go ahead and start with um, the multi-energy package. I ran it blue-green, so I ran four Android 17, Protector of the Wildlife. This is from Mr. Beer's Fickle God of um, blue-green. Stands if you have a multicolor energy already. Works perfectly, uh, definitely a, a four of. Uh, this is the heart and soul of the deck, which is the four Go Sun Gohan and Piccolo, Pupil and Master. Um, this card right here is just amazing. It has Barrier, it has Revive. Um, and it has an auto effect whenever it attacks. You choose one of your opponent's cards in there, or they choose one card in their hand and they discard it. So the whole combo with this is since he has barrier and you're attacking this card a card, your Kaioken leader makes it to where they have to attack him and it's almost impossible to remove him. And if they somehow do KO him, you pitch a multicolored card to revive him and then trigger his effect to draw two cards. The card is insane. This is definitely the heart and soul of it. Um, I ran one of the Secret of Rare, uh, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Peak of Primitive Power. And this card, you, you guys probably saw the price price increase, card's amazing, uh, triple attack, double strike, critical, um, it comes out on Rival, 40,000, amazing, beautiful, beautiful looking card too, Vegeta's my favorite character, so. Um, the last part of the multi-package that I ran is three of the Sun Goku Spirit of the Planet. Um, this card was never really used on the field unless I absolutely had to, but if you did have to, it also has the ability to pay one blue and one green to give it triple strike, which in some cases can just be a game ender. So, I mean, overall, it's, it's, it's a good card. It's mostly used for either energy or it's used for my Gogeta target, since I do run the Gogeta 7 package sheet. It's a 15k Sun Goku. Um, so, off the multicolor package, I run two of the Kaioken Sun Goku Strenuous Onslaught. Um, again, it is a Sun Goku card that is 15k power, so I can use it from my Gogeta target. Um, he is very similar to like the Digging Deeps, but where he's a little better is that when he comes out, his auto effect triggers immediately, whereas all the new counterplays like Chompa, Vegeta, the Cruel can, can kill Vegeta you know, before it can do anything. This card triggers on the play, so you can get one or two life added to your hand, this card gains 5,000 power for the turn, and at the start of your opponent's next turn, you untap the energy. So this guy pretty much comes out for two, self-awakening. Amazing card. Um, the only Vegeta target for your Gogeta in the entire deck is for Vegeta the Cool. Um, this is your counterplay. It comes pretty much, if you bring out an eight, bring out any four drop that doesn't have barrier, you can just target one card in the field, KO it, and make your opponent warp a card. So since they're already hand controlling your opponent, this goes along with the theme and ties along perfectly. Um, so that's the Goku and Vegeta package. I ran two of the Gogeta Hero Revived. Um, yeah, you guys already know, it's probably one of the most hated cards in the game. Um, comes out, dumps your opponent's all hand in three. Don't need to really say any more about that. Uh, being a green leader also allowed me to run the Paragus Super Combo. Uh, draw two, warp one. Probably one of the best Super Combos in the game, if not the best. Um, so obviously that's going to be a guaranteed four of. Uh, ran two Awakening Talent Pens for the Self Awakening. Uh, it has a lot of value, comes back to your hand. It's good for, you know, a rival, or it's good for just keeping that hand advantage after your Self Awakening so they can't kill it and it puts in work. This card was making people pretty much concede throughout the entire event. It was uh, 
two piccolo assimilated ability i would i'm absolutely gonna bump it up to at least three maybe four um once this guy was out with your your piccolo gohan it was pretty much impossible for him to penetrate it therefore they can never really get to your leader and you're just keeping the monsters hand advantage and you're KOing all their battle cards five or less and it's 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 an amazing card um to you of the ultra instinct goku um, it's definitely worth its value. I don't know about the new value, but it's definitely worth the value. Um, being able to bounce anything back, you know, any big threat they bring out, the Migro, Fu, or Gogeta, whatever it may be, just bounce it back and don't have to worry about it. It's, it's an amazing card. Um, I slimmed down to three of the pseudo combos, the Infernal Villainy Cells. Um, your, the deck does run Zeno Button, so you'll notice I play a lot of 10Ks, but you also have an energy available to you a lot. So, you know, just draw a card, keep your card healthy, and you're good. I, uh, I just ran one Furthering Destruction Champa. Um, it, when I was testing, I just I saw some times when like my phone was at two and I just didn't have that double strike I needed to just go in. So I just threw one in there just to have it in there. Um, you know, a lot of my battle cards already had double strike or triple strike, so I wasn't putting it in there originally. But one one actually ran pretty good. Um, I ran one of the Ultimate Fusion Gogeta. Uh, it's in there. You can also do the Union Fusion since you do have the Goku and Vegeta. Bring it off for four. This is more removal for the deck. Kill two battle cards at the bottom of the deck. Draw two cards. 25k double strike. Amazing. So, unlock. You do run Gogeta already and other finishers, but these two were definitely the main finishers of the deck. So, I ran one of the Food the Dark Banisher. Uh, I ran these cards in particular because they are good against like the hacky sack matchup or any matchups that are just very restrictive like a Janemba and things like that. This card just gets through and swings multiple times and there's nothing we can really do. I was originally running two, I cut one out and put it in the sideboard to replace it with um, Fu Shrouded in Mystery. This card was like, it's killing people all, all weekend. So um, it comes out, pretty much your opponent has no abilities, 30k double strike, and that's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, he would. I, I didn't realize the ruling on it, so I thought the entire weekend that he could, he could be um, UI Goku, like when he got out, that the UI could actually bounce it back. Apparently that the ruling is that you can't, since this card says it can't be activated, whereas Goku says it just can't be negated. So it actually does stop the UI Goku. So that's just food for thought, so you know exactly you know what you can do with that. Um, so that's the main board for battle cards. Um, my extra cards I ran were one Slumber Strike, um, being able to, you go, you want to use it if you have a green leader, so I was able to use it. You get to select one of your opponent's battle cards that are equal to or greater entrance cost and KO it. Right at the head, they try to stack the big baby out there, they try to stack something, you can just clear it off the board for one, not to worry about it. Where this card, you guys know, I love playing remote series bomb, where this card's a little different. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really whiff to where, what, I'm, what I mean by that is like, let's say they don't have a big, big battle card, but they have lower cards. You can always play it and kill anything with energy cost of three or less, so it always has a use. Um, I played two of uh, Preemptive Strike. This card's kind of nuts, if, especially if you already have your opponent on lockdown. They're trying to play battle cards and kind of crawl back in the game. And you're just like, no, you can't play. You're not bringing out that pick low. You're not bringing out anything, you know, apes, whatever it may be. You're not bringing it out. I'm just going to stop it before it comes out. Um, I ran three Whis Coergents. Um, well, I got a lot of people asking me why I ran this instead of Shocking Death Ball over the weekend. And it's kind of like... I didn't really run into a lot of decks that were running like two drop, they were very two drop dominant. You know, there were a lot of people who were playing either bombs or they're playing higher cost cards. So this card, especially since I run so many 10Ks, it allows me to negate an attack, restand my energy, and be able to still defend myself. So I found Whis just to be good. I had it at four, some at three. Um, I didn't realize Baby was going to be there. If it was, I probably should have ran more negates, but <laughs> it is what it is. So um, I ran three Zeno Button. This card is like. <laughs> This card just makes people sad, like it's probably limited or something because you can pretty much run it in any deck you want to run multicolor with. You know, tap out, play your big bombs, have defense, and just be able to un untap everything and play your super combos or whatever it may be. This card's insane. And then the four, of course, best card in the game, sends it to um, Just to, you know, any aggro decks or to be able to continue to play. You know, with the new cunning cards out, uh, unfortunately, so you can't, sometimes you can't extend your plays on offense as much, but on defense, it's still a monster card. So this was the main deck. Uh, I'm gonna go over the side deck I ran. I ran um, an additional Ultra Instinct. Uh, UI just in case I ran into, uh, again, another matchup with Wyatt on very big bombs. Or maybe I ran into Shenron, unfortunately, which I did in the last round of the event. Um, this card helps you. 
I also ran Mafuba. Um, Mafuba was good for the decks that ran big bombs. It was also good for the mirror match if I still happen to play against a deck that was running yellow, yellow green. They try to bring out that go, you know, the Gohan Piccolo that has barriers. You're just able to clear off the board for a couple turns and not have to worry about the deadly defender. This card put in work. Uh, another card that was in there for the mirror match that um, was able to, you know, not make it to where they can discard cards from my hand, or if I played against a deck that was very topo reliant, I could also bring that in. Um, and just so I can show you the counterpart to it, I sideboarded this in case people sideboard Mercenary Town. Um, I played two of the Double Impact Krillin, uh, which I was able to use to clear the towel off the board so I can keep discarding cards from my opponent's hand. Very, very crucial. Uh, one more Slumber Strike. In case I ran into the baby matchup, sideboard another one in, clear cards out. One more Fool the Dark Banisher against the Hacky Sack matchup because I you'll know I hate that matchup, so I ran this just to, just to kind of mess with that. Um, against like Bulma or any deck that swarms the board with apes or whatever it may be, I sideboarded Android 21, struck the villain. Not many people know what it does. Um, the villainous trait doesn't really play a factor in here because you don't want to run any other villain cards, but its effect is, you know, you choose one card in your energy and place it in your drop. Um, when you play this card, you choose all your opponent's battle cards, which cost them four or less, and you send them to the bottom of the deck. So if they have a bunch of apes out, or whatever it may be, you bring this out and just clear the board. Or if you're playing Bulma and they just have like 21 drops out there, you're just like, okay, now you have no blockers. So it's kind of like, you clear their board quick. Um, I ran one of the uh, Preemptive Strike, another one, just in case it was a pan, like a pan deck or some heavy, heavy single card deck. Um, two TN Sorrow for Strike. It was for the Janemba and the Hacky Sack matchup, just because a lot of times Hacky Sack resorts to trying to deck you out. It's kind of like the new Janemba, so if they're trying to do that, you just keep putting the bombs back in the deck and stay alive. I didn't think I'd run into Shenron, or I guess this would go into Shenron as well. Um, two Haru Attack Imagine, you already know, against the green yellow matchup, comes in, continues your turn, which is crazy. And the two, its counterpart, the two Tien Returning Fire, lock down all blue decks and just pretty much go in on them as hard as possible. So this was the deck that I ran for the Dallas PPG events. Overall, I definitely recommend this leader. It had a pretty, it was very successful for me. You know, unfortunately, I didn't make day two. I was five and zero out of eight rounds on in day one. I lost three straight. I only needed to win one of the three rounds. I lost three straight. Um, I played, uh, you know, my first loss and what I played in the sixth round was Justin Rios. You guys are the Dallas, the Dallas winner. Um, that baby deck was just monstrous. I just, I felt like I was pretty much defenseless against it. It was very, very impressive. Um, I give him a lot of props on that deck and a lot of props on how he piloted it. So um, I lost to that. I lost to uh, Dehan, who was running the yellow Broly, yellow Broly, like a blue green variant. Uh, it was very grimy. He knows he got me with that Ultra Instinct by surprise, but it's okay. I, you know, I'm much props to him, you know, uh, much love. And um, the last kid I played, you know, I believe he was from Puerto Rico, um, came down, he ended up getting seventh in Swiss, you know, came down to a 5K combo. He was playing High to Mastery uh, Shenron, and um, I just, I didn't have it, and he got there. So, you know, shout out to him for doing such an amazing job. Um, overall, the event was, you know, very well ran. You know, George Machado, all those guys, man, they, they know what they're doing. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty much what happened there. Um, and like I was telling you guys before, I will be making another video with more of an in-depth kind of analysis um, and let you know you know what my matchups exactly were and how I was able to overcome them. And you know, and just my overall experience with Dallas and the current meta. All right, guys, there you got it. Top 32 deck from the current national champion. All right, thank you, guys.